Welcome back, everyone, to Aspire to Lead, where we will be discussing the visions, inspirations, and experiences from top educational leaders. My name is Joshua Stamper, and you can connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram at Joshua Dub underscore Stamper. Aspire listeners, I have an amazing guest with me. And again, this is a bonus episode, The Failure Files. And I bring on folks that have been administrators who have gone through struggles and have learned through each one of those experiences. And I have the fantastic Danny Bauer with me. And I can't tell you how fortunate I am to be connected with this amazing leader and he just does so many fantastic things for administrators, for educators, and Danny, I just appreciate your time. Josh, like anytime I get to hang out with you, you know this. I mean, we've already been chatting for 15 minutes before even the <laughs> podcast, and we were saying, hey, that's not true for everybody. So what you need to know is if you're on Josh's show and you don't talk about 15 minutes or my show, it's like we're, we're thinking the whole time, how do we get out of this? <laughs> we have fallen in this trap where we we record together and then it turns into like two hours and we're like, where did the time yeah. go? So you are yeah, definitely yeah. a friend of the podcast. Um, like I said, I, I value you so much and you have been such a fantastic resource for my own leadership journey. And Thank you. I, I just love what you do with your Ruckus Makers crew and uh, yeah. I just want to have a chance for you to to share out. And so, Danny, just to give a little backstory as far as this new project I've, I've been doing is, sure. you know, we talk about the successes all the time. And, you know, I have hundreds of episodes where people share these fantastic and wonderful initiatives that they've done and how they've seen success. However, we don't really see the, like behind the scenes and the struggles that occur within that journey. And mm-hmm. I would love for you just to be able to share something that maybe you experienced, you did not see success in it and because of that journey and because of that experience you feel like you actually learned more through the failure than you did through the success yeah right failure is a great teacher that resonates with everybody's head but not their heart so you resonate with people's hearts through story and i'm teaching a a leadership lesson right there so that's the first tool here's another thing I, i was recently in denver and you'll just have to rein me in okay so because i'll go out you know i don't do that with you danny well, hopefully I'll read myself. And then uh, I was recently in Denver and over two days spoke to like 120, 150 uh, leaders. It was pretty cool. Had all sorts of stuff planned. It was interesting. You know, I always ask like, what was the number one insight? You know, what was helpful? A lot of people mentioned something that I didn't even plan on teaching, which was interesting. So it wasn't necessarily like the tool. It was this idea. So I want to share the idea here too, because, you know, I learned this from Jeff Weiner, former CEO of LinkedIn. And he said, until you get sick of saying something as a leader, it's not until that exact point when you're like pulling your hair out, like, what the heck? I've been telling these people forever, right? Why aren't they hearing it? It's at that point that they actually start listening for the first time. And that's important too, because I think uh, as school leaders, you know, maybe not listeners of our podcast, but let's just say in general, sometimes leadership isn't modeled in a very effective way. And I'll tell you, like many principals are just really bad at presenting and speaking. And like, it's just like, here's slides, data, more data. It has nothing to do with emotion. But there's a psychologist, Jonathan Heat. He said, the emotional tail wags the rational dog. We all want to think we're logical and have these processes and stuff. We're emotional beings. So if you're not trying to connect with people's hearts through story, you just really miss out an opportunity to optimize your leadership. Okay. So that's the first point stories. So we could pick when I held a key about two inches in front of a colleague's face and told, and told her the punchline is I told her I'd never return the key to her again. Um, so if you want to hear that one, I'm going to let you pick. That's okay. what I'm doing. The time I found out why I had so many scars on my back is because my assistant principal was stabbing me, but I didn't realize it was her. Wow. Right. By the time I, I resigned from the principalship. These are all failures. Yeah. I mean, wow. resignation, that sounds like a failure. Like, it does. I think getting stabbed in the back is a failure because I didn't I didn't see it. And uh, it really screwed up stuff. And then there's the key story where, believe it or not, in the key story, I'm acting like, can you imagine me as like a big no, jerk? No. That, Everybody I, always says that. Believe me, I got it in me. <laughs> That's we the all one do. I was actually leaning toward because I just can't imagine you. In People that love that story. Yeah, let's, yeah, yeah, that one kind of intrigued me. Okay, 
So I'm a quasi administrator, but it's still it's still relevant for people that are already like a real administrator. By quasi, I mean I'm an instructional coach, right? So I'm not always in the classroom. I'm teaching two classes, but I'm getting a lot of administrative work to do within the building as I'm wor working through my certification. So that's part of the context. Context number two. So Texas, like you're North North Texas, is yep. that right? Tell me, what's your favorite coffee too in North Texas? Oh, well, it's Papa Rob's coffee. Yeah, Papa He's Rob's. Is like Papa Rob's the best. amazing. I hope one day I can visit you in real life and we can go to Papa Rob's and I would love enjoy that. the coffee. So where was I? I don't know how I got to that. Papa <laughs> Rob's, North Texas. Oh, so I'm working on my certification and this kind of stuff. North Texas, probably not like big unions. Is that a correct assumption? Yeah. Yeah. Texas says, you know, union, you you could go shove it, right? That's like that kind of thing. Pretty much how the state works, <laughs> yes. So in Chicago, red shirts. I'd have to check, but at least a few years ago, Chicago had a bigger union than even New York City. So that yep. says something. Very strong union area. This is my lived experience. So it doesn't mean everywhere, but everywhere I've taught or led a school, the union rep of the building was the worst teacher. Hmm. Can you imagine that? And in this particular context, this union rep and worst teacher in the building clearly would fail all, all the students, fail all the students, just make it up before the end of any semester. And then the admin team would have to scramble and field calls and yep. we're working through it. And we knew this was going to happen, but couldn't stop it because you couldn't just fire her. Like we had to work through a process. Sure. And I'm sharing this story too, by the way, I'm actually very pro-union. Okay. Just so you know, but uh, I think there's some give and take in protecting teachers like this. Probably not a good idea. It takes way too long to get a, a really sour apple. Mm -hmm. Actually, not even sour, rotten, yep. toxic, out. Okay, so that's just one thing she does. Another thing, would you agree that like to be an effective educator, you need to come to school? <laughs> yes. I think that might be like number one on the list, yes. It's up there, right? That's not even talking about your instruction, but yeah. show up, okay? She doesn't show up. Like, you know, Fridays, those days are off, off the table, like holiday stuff coming up or spring break, you know, there's going to be an extension every single time. It's predictable. But get, here's the thing though, like I'm painting this teacher in kind of in a bad light. I'm actually the villain of the story. Hmm. Okay. The interesting thing is when we, we came into this uh, school, we didn't shake up the department leads and the instructional lead team in the beginning, right? That's like rule number one. Don't change too much as a new leader, yep. right? New to a building. So we wanted people to show who they really were before we made decisions if they were in the right position. This person was clearly not in the right position. But as a department chair in her, her classroom, she just happened to, uh, for some reason, the English department's book room was in her classroom, right? You, you had to get through it to, to get the books. English classes, you need books to yep. teach the material. Like I said, she doesn't show up to work consistently. And you know how crazy like a school day could be. So if she's not there and the sub's not there yet and all this kind of stuff, the classroom's locked. People are literally locked out from the materials of the very like engaging and real world and authentic lessons that they had created. And then they're just SOL, you know, they're out of luck. And so I decide as a quasi administrator, I could see right and wrong clearly here. The right choice is the open the door because I have a key. I have a master key. So I would open the door. And one day she finds out she's not happy, not happy at all. And she's, we need to have a conversation. And I agree. So have you heard of Crucial Conversations, the book by any oh, yeah. chance? Yeah. So I read it once. You know me. Like, so I read it a second time. I've gone over all my annotations. Part of that process is like you sort of script out and visualize what the hard conversation is going to be like. You want to make it safe and all this kind of stuff. So I write the script and I practice and practice and practice. And then the day of the hard conversation comes. Um, this is probably the only thing I did right. In, in addition to preparing, the only other thing I did right is we had the conversation on her turf in, in the room so that, you know, she was more comfortable. So the mistake I made is, uh, believe it or not, I didn't deliver her the script I had prepared. And so as we're sitting down and having this very real and very difficult conversation, Josh, she's going off script. <laughs> she's not doing what I had predicted and visualized, right? So it's really frustrating because I'm trying to make it safe. I'm trying to redirect. I'm trying to answer all her concerns. 
And basically the conversation escalates to the point where she's like, you need to give the key to the principal. You're not even an administrator, you know, and my ego is like hurting and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, you need to come to effing school. Like kids need access to the books. Yep. This is what we're talking about. And she's like, you need to give the key back. So not effective at all. I wish I had a key <laughs> to her face, two inches from her nose. You'll never get this key over my dead body. <laughs> What a jerk. I'm a total jerk. And uh, I apologize that evening face to face to her because I realized, you know, I, I blew that. Sure. Hurt the relationship. It never was going to be a great relationship, but she deserves dignity and respect. And and I just, I screwed it up. So even when a teacher's like ineffective or bad, or you may even think they're like not physically, hopefully harming kids, but you know what I mean? Like they're, they're just screwing stuff up. Treat them with respect. So I, I I really, I really, really messed that up. So big failure. What's the lesson learned? Well, then pff, a decade later, I read a book called Thanks for the Feedback, which is actually about receiving feedback. And I think it's from some folks uh, in Harvard, maybe. Mm. They talk about a concept, and this is for the listener, right? The learning. There's an idea called switch tracking. And what that means, like, you know, you have a lovely family, but do you yeah. ever get in, you know, conflict with your partner or kids? No, yeah, for sure. And does it ever seem like, do we live on a different freaking planet? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, they yeah. don't listen to podcasts. I mean, you could tell it all right here, right? So switch tracking means you're actually talking about two different issues. And so I thought I was talking to her about coming to school having the door open so kids could have access and teachers could have access to books. I haven't, I haven't revealed this until this point in the story. What she was talking about was how I was uh, infringing or violating her domain. Mm. And she thought I was coming in there dressed in black, like a ninja, <laughs> ninja bower, stealing the union documents and giving them to administration. Even though like all evidence is I'm a pro union guy. Like I helped, with collective bargaining, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with the documents. So my point is, we we're talking about two different issues. Mm -hmm. I failed to see that in the moment. And if I had addressed that part and probably owned, you know what? I didn't see that. I'm sorry. That makes total sense. I bet she would have, I bet we could have came up with a solution. Sure. Instead, key to the face, you suck. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. I, I am just like envisioning myself as a, as a young leader, especially uh, going through the ideology of like, I'm the boss versus like yeah. a collaborator for finding solutions and how I... <laughs> had these similar communication styles to, you know, say like, this is me, the leader on a campus versus, you know, we're in a partnership and we need to find a solution yeah. together. So yeah. I love your transparency. I, that's why I wanted you on this show and, and to share that. So thank you for that. But I think this is a good segue too, because you, for my listeners that may not have heard previous episodes and for sure you need to check those out because Danny's been on the podcast several times, always provides a lot of wisdom, but you've got an exciting program coming up to help principals and it's yeah. called the Principal Success Path, and I know it's launching here soon. So, do you mind sharing just a little bit of what that program's all about? No, it'd be uh, it'd be my honor. So, yeah, Principal Success Path is launching uh, January fifteenth, twenty twenty three. At this point, this is the fourth cohort, so it's a proven model. It's worked for just about seventy five. We, we've usually had around twenty something uh, per cohort, and so this is a fourth cohort. One thing, and this is a leadership tip as well, like, are you responsive to those that you serve? So these days I serve school leaders 100% of my time. First cohort was 90 days. That was too long. The second cohort and the third cohort was five weeks. And that was too intense, mm -hmm. right? So I think I think we've found a, a nice uh, middle road, you know, with the 10 weeks. And the other thing too, about being responsive, program used to be, I'd say, heavy investment on video content and text, you know, that people could consume asynchronously on their own. 
And here's a leadership lesson. Like my word I'm thinking about in 2023 is alignment. And the magic that I create with school leaders and the results that I help them experience, those are all because of these moments, like you and I, you know, on a live call. So the mastermind that I've done, that's always been live. Mm -hmm. Principal success path wasn't. And I'm like, oh, well, that's not an alignment. Everything should be these live experiences. Even this um, maximize your margin challenge we recently did. I used to do that and just send an email because it's easy, right? And it helps people. But I'm like, actually, if they're there with me on the call, I could help get them unstuck, solve the challenges in the moment, and they'll probably get a lot more momentum. Maybe less people participate because of the time, but the people who do will get more, more value. So alignment. So principle success path responsiveness. That's to say through the 10 weeks, the program's also being redesigned. Mondays, we'll do a live call where we teach an idea, tell some stories, share a tool that uh, basically, um, if you implement it, you're going to see immediate results. And each week, participants will be working through different types of projects, right? On a Tuesday, they're going to post their project. Wednesday is all about giving and receiving feedback. Thursdays, re they reflect, put a cherry on top. How have you grown? And then Friday, we're just having an open space called office hours uh, where people can go deeper into the content. Or we'll do some live masterminding. And so it's like, hey, I have a teacher who's not coming to school. What 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 can I do? And we'll just do some hot seats. Yeah. So that's the Monday through Friday cadence. And that happens for 10 weeks. Um, the promise is simple, right? We guarantee that, that you're going to be an even more effective leader. Because really, I, I'm, I'm working with effective leaders. So to help you just get to the next level uh, in 10 weeks or less. And I'll tell you, in the old program that was five weeks, there's a principal, Glenda. She was in week number two. And we were working on a project that has to do with uh, entrances, you know, and, and think about your previous school, mm -hmm. you know. Can you tell me a little bit, like, what was the entrance like when people walked in? I mean, it was glass doors. I mean, as far as, yeah. you know, office to the right, you go through another set of doors, stairwell, nurse to the left, and then it was kind of just an open space to try and figure out where to go and a lot of times parents yeah. would get lost in that first touch point would happen where like at, at what point they have to go to the front office so everyone's directed yeah. there and they the secretary uh, is the first person that they would see gotcha any messages signs pictures things like that like as you're coming in yeah so they have when you go into the foyer um, to get to the front office they have a pretty large plaque talking about the person uh, miss stafford who the building was named after and her Yep. recognition as far as like what she did for the district that's cool and I, I bet contributed great stuff right to the community amazing stuff which is really neat from that and i haven't been there but i hear i hear some areas of opportunity and i don't want to like start teaching the project too too much mm -hmm. but during the redesign of the entrance it's like there's there's things you can do that are super practical uh that communicate you belong here and that Stafford plaque says, you know, this is a person that we honor. And that's important, right? But it doesn't say anything about the students and the community, like who's important, who belongs, who doesn't belong. Sometimes you even want to communicate who doesn't belong. You know, I'm not, whatever, don't want to get too into the weeds. But the point is, there's probably a lot of opportunities for most schools to really give, let's just call it a facelift to the to the entrance, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's one of the projects, one of the 10. And Glenda, a principal in, in Massachusetts, she took action just on that one project. She did all the projects. She was a superstar, A++, you know, participant. And her staff was like, Josh, they were like, what happened to you this summer? Hmm. Right? Like, we like it. <laughs> whatever, whatever you did, they literally told her, whatever you did, don't stop doing it. Wow. And I, and I talked to her today, about an hour before our call just catch up and this kind of stuff. And she said, Danny, that momentum's carried through the year. So that's just one little piece, one little project. So what I can say, all the projects, super job embedded, uh, focused on getting you a result in the near term, but all the things you can do the next semester, the next year, like it doesn't go away, the value, right? Uh, so that's pretty cool in ter terms of the exponential value there. Yeah, it's just it's really awesome. It's built on a framework, four parts, mindset. So if you want to develop your mindset, if you are interested in uh, thinking about intentional design, which that entrance one is clearly all about, uh, design thinking and stuff. Um, I'm a culture guy, so creating world-class cultures. 
And then at the end of the day, we're all about results. So if you want to consistently create results for your community, that's what the that's the operating system for the principal success path. I love it. So Danny, how can they, you know, sign up for the, this amazing program? Yeah. Well, it's pretty easy since they are like big fans of you. If you go to uh <laughs> joshstamper.com slash success, and you could read a little bit more about the program. If you have school resources available, you could say, Hey, I'd like an estimate. Uh, some people do, you know, invest out of their own personal funds and you could, you can choose that. And then there's a third option. Hey, I'm 99% sure this is a great program for me, but I'd like to uh, get on a call with Danny and, you know, we can set that up too. So there's three options and there's an application uh, for that as well. Yeah. Danny, when you started to talk through this program with me, I, I was like, oh, I got to get you on. We got to talk through this. And I know you provide such amazing you know, resources and, and wisdom with any program that you provide. So yeah, for my listeners, definitely check this out. Um, make sure you go to joshsamper.com slash success, and then we'll get you hooked up with this program. And I'm just thinking too, like early in my leadership journey, I would have loved to be a part yeah. of this program. And, you know, I, I'm so you know appreciative of, of you being able to provide this resource to so many leaders who may feel like they're a part of the the journey that you shared, right? Of feeling yeah. like a failure and, and needs to, you know, to find a community and find, you know, some resources to enhance their leadership journey. Yeah. Well, we're certainly better together, you know, and I, I believe uh, when you get better, everybody wins. Yep. Right. And I think school leaders, I do want to say this and I do want to challenge a listener. You're, you're so good. You have a big heart. That's a strength, but also a weakness. And principals, assistant principals are great about, oh, what can I do for the teachers? What can I do for the students? And you should think that I'm not saying stop. But there's a reason on planes, right? They say put on your oxygen mask first so you can help others. You can't pour from an empty cup. Research shows, too, that districts aren't uh, filling the cups of principals. That's my role. Like, I fill principals' cups, right? Help them get that energy, that momentum. And if you want to start 2023, right, with some really good uh, foundation, yeah, we can help. So Wonderful. Danny, I just appreciate you so much. And Thank you for being on the Failure Files program here. Failure Files. Sharing a little bit about your journey in this, this wonderful program. Pleasure. It's always great being on here. Thanks, Josh.